Ever since the beginnings of recorded music, audio editing has been an integral part of the process. In a live performance, there are always plenty of little glitches, clams, false notes, imperfect timing, and the like. No matter how good the players are, we humans are just not capable of that level of perfection. And that's fine. In a show or a concert, little minor errors are quickly forgotten, or barely even noticed, in the excitement of the live performance environment. But a recording is a different matter. Listening to the same performance over and over again reveals all those minor details to a degree they'd never be noticed on the first or only listen. So recordings have a different, more stringent standard of perfection. Recorded performances don't have to, and shouldn't be, mechanically perfect, but they will be held to a higher standard in this regard. And that was probably one of the first reasons for audio editing. Even in the days when analog tape was the primary recording medium, engineers were expected to be able to make mechanical edits to a pretty high degree of technical and musical accuracy. In fact, that was one of the things that separated amateur recordists from professional engineers, since editing in those days was a lot more demanding. You had to get it right the first time. There was no safety net. But even with the difficulty and the potential risks of cutting up tape, audio editing has always been widely done, and not just to correct performance errors. Comping takes, creating a composite version of a song or a track by piecing together the best bits of several takes, has always been a mainstay of recording. Sometimes it was done by cutting tape, other times it was accomplished by punching, re-recording sections of a musical part on the fly. Again, with no real room for error on the part of the engineer, or the performers for that matter. Of course, with the shift to digital recording, these traditional editing techniques have become much easier and much more efficient. Fixing bum notes or phrases, comping different takes of a musical part, or a whole arrangement, can be done nowadays with just a few mouse clicks. And the do-or-die aspect of it is gone. If you screw up an edit in a DAW, you can always hit undo and try again. But with this new ease of digital editing came new editing capabilities, things you can do in the digital domain that were simply not possible in the all-analog recording world. Modern techniques like beat mapping, independent time and pitch shifting, auto-tuning, and sound replacement are common. Every DAW has these capabilities. And even more advanced types of processing, like audio repair and spectral editing, are widespread, though not as ubiquitous as the first ones I mentioned. But all of these audio editing and processing techniques, while powerful, are not always as simple as DAW and plug-in makers and experienced engineers sometimes make it seem. There's definitely a steeper learning curve for all these miracle edits we can do nowadays, and that's the purpose for this course. While I will spend a minute or two reviewing basic traditional audio editing techniques, along with a little background on the evolution of audio editing, the point of this course is to cover those techniques and processes that are unique to the digital domain, the stuff that can't be done outside the box. I'll go over approaches to beat mapping, making a session's tempo ruler match the actual timing of a live performance, and vice versa, time shifting an audio recording to bring it in line with a steady session tempo. I'll cover independent time and pitch shifting, speeding up or slowing down an audio recording without the pitch being unintentionally altered, like with tape or turntables. And the other side of that coin, changing the pitch of already recorded tracks without the chipmunk effect, preserving the natural tonality of the voice or instrument. Naturally, I'll touch on pitch correction, which is a subset of that, both automatic retuning and manual pitch fixing, not to mention the more creative aspects of that technology, like reimagining melodies and creating artificial harmonies from a lead vocal. I'll even take a look at the cutting edge of that technology, the polyphonic pitch shifting currently only available in Melodyne. Ever since MIDI hit the scene, people have gotten used to the idea of changing the sound of an instrument after the performance has been laid down, and of course, this can also be done with audio tracks now as well. I'll take a brief look at sound replacement and drum replacement techniques. And finally, maybe a little more toward the mastering side of things, I'll go over audio repair. Those apps and plugins that take on mechanical issues of a recording, like clicks, hum, and background noise removal, and the leading edge of that type of editing, spectral processing, which lets you get into a complex recording, separate out some of the elements, and remove the unwanted sounds. Like pulling a siren out of a vocal track, or a squeak from a piano bench out of a piano recording. 
Needless to say, this kind of processing is more difficult and labor-intensive, and can't always work miracles. But it's getting better every day, and pretty soon everyone's going to have to have mastered it. So that's what this course is about. Digital editing beyond the basics. All the tricks that are only possible in the digital world. I'll start off in the next two tutorials with that little bit of background on the evolution of editing, and then after that, we'll just jump right in.